Well, I'm born and bred Johannesburg. Um, I've lived here my whole life. Even when I had to choose a varsity, I just wanted to be in Johannesburg. Um, I went to Fitz uh, and I did a uh, chartered accountancy. So I'm actually an accountant by profession. Um, I've always been interested in banking. Um, and I'm just a, a girl who loved beauty growing up and kind of looked at how I could tap into the beauty industry and started an e-commerce business called Beauty on Tap, which um, yeah, is now a fully flourished e-commerce platform that retails all things beauty. Um, I'm a fitness enthusiast. I love fitness. Um, I love baking. And yeah, I'm just a homebody and quiet person. Um, so I think growing up, I always had two sides to me. I had the matsy, nerdy side. Um, but I also had a very creative side of me that loved like creating. I used to make my dolls like clothes and stuff. So even though I did go into banking and even going becoming a chartered accountant, I wanted to do a BCom finance to do banking. Um, so even though I went into banking, I still had this like itch for something creative um, and like innovation. And I was actually talking to my mother the other day and she said, you've always been an entrepreneur, even from when you were little, you always started little businesses. So even though I was in banking, you know, I stumbled on this opportunity to start a tech business, a find a beauty service business, which is how Beauty on Tap started and kind of flourished into an e-commerce business. So it kind of found me. I wasn't necessarily looking for, you know, um, an entrepreneurship journey or a business. And so um, when I got the idea, I kind of said, let me see what I can do with this. It's like a whole story, you know, I just found an opportunity um, because I thought, you know, there was a need that I had. I wanted to look for a makeup artist in Cape Town mm -hmm. for a friend's wedding. And there were no beauty tools or there wasn't an app that could help you access um, someone like that super fast. And so I was like, let me try and build something. And I mean, I'm not a tech person. I'm not a coder or a developer. I had to find people to help me. And so, um, you know, even though I was creative, I always thought I'd go into something fashion-y, you know, because mm -hmm. I loved fashion um, when I was little. And so beauty is kind of aligned to fashion. And so when... I started with the business, I realized that, well, I'm actually quite passionate about beauty um, and learning more about beauty, the industry itself, um, distribution channels, just even the the logistics and business side of beauty really interested me. And so um, that's why I kind of decided to further my, um, further my intrigue into this industry and see what I could do around it. So when we started the business, it was a find a beauty service application. And people always say that Beauty on Tap is a beauty business. It's not. It's a tech business. Um, so we leverage technology to see how we can bring beauty services or products to people in a very efficient way. Um, and so in 2015, it started um, out as an application where we had a whole lot of services listed on our directory. Um, and we also had a product side to it, which was, um, you know, at the time, there's a natural hair movement, people looking for affordable natural hair products. Mm. Um, and, you know, the product side of it was doing much better than the find a service side, which was the initial idea what the app was anchored on. Um, and people were kind of like, would be cool if we could buy all these products on one platform because we have to order from this one and this one. And, you know, the shipping fees are so high. Um, and said, can't you guys just launch one, you know, platform where we can do everything. And so um, that's how it started is us just, you know, fulfilling a need. People wanted to find affordable beauty products and have one box delivered with one delivery fee. And it kind of grew into something um, more than just natural hair care. Now our focus is largely skincare. And even then we launched our own skincare brand as well, just based on consumer needs. And so, you know, it started off as a tech service business and has flourished into um, a beauty e-tailer or retailer and we're even um, opening our first store very soon so we're more than just tech now with beauty and tech and distribution now so um we used to get questions from a lot of people who'd say you know i i want face care but i also want body care that's similar to face care and you know people say to us can you look for something like this in the market and you know we went out and we hunted for something that gives people active ingredients in their body care um, and there were a whole lot of products um, overseas or, you know, internationally. And I wouldn't say a whole lot. It was kind of, it's still kind of like a, a growing part of the beauty industry, uh, body care with actives. And we kind of said, okay, cool. Um, let's look into doing something like this. And fortunately for me, I'd had a formulator who contacted me on Twitter DMs and said, hey, if you ever want to start your own brand. And she actually said, hey, care brand, um, just reach out to me. And I remember that I have somebody who asked me to reach out. Um, and I spoke to her about it and she said it's actually possible because obviously you have to see the scientific feasibility 
is it safe for people to put actives on their body? Um, and as a um, chemistry uh, major, she was like, it's 100% okay. If you can put it on your face, then your body's fine. Um, and just based on the data and the questions we were getting, we were able to bring a body care range with active ingredients and that has done very well and we've actually expanded into face care as well. Um, so we have pastry now that sits under Beauty on Tap that is available at other retailers as well. I think one of the biggest challenges, you know, as you said, the beauty industry is still largely dominated by large corporate businesses that are international and aren't black owned. Mm -hmm. And so when you're a black female knocking on their door saying, I want to sell your product to people on my small e-commerce platform, they're kind of like, mm, no, not you, you know, and even local brands were kind of like, not you. Um, and so convincing people to like hedge a bit on you and just take a chance and give your business a chance was really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you have to work 10 times harder to prove yourself, to prove your brand, to prove, you know, what concept you're trying to build um, and getting people to buy into your brand. And, you know, with Beauty on Tap, we had, you know, local brands that backed us, like black female owned brands that backed us and said, we're going to back you, we're going to give you a chance. And they opened us up to a lot more brands because people saw that if this brand can trust this platform, then let's go ahead and give it a chance. Um, and so I think proving yourself, especially being a tech business, there's so many other tech, you know, e-commerce platforms available. I mean, there's, you know, big ones available that people actually sell on. Um, people just backing us and giving us a chance is what's really brought us um, to this point. And of course, our community Um and, you know, we especially target black females because um, they kind of get left behind when it comes to beauty. No one really speaks to them, tells them what to use. So we've just been very lucky in building that community and having people just back us from the beginning. Um, so I think the first thing is based on our formulations, we formulate for African skin. So um, we look at ingredients that are nourishing. Um, we know that our skin gets dry because of the climate. And so, you know, our formulation base or even our body care bases are always very nourishing and so we take black skin into consideration when we formulate our products um just our languaging and marketing i mean a lot of brands come to us because they say you guys market differently you speak to people differently um we educate people um more than anything it's telling people what's in this product what this ingredient does for your skin um and so i think our differentiator is that we've built community around our beauty business it's more than just us dumping product and selling product but it's involving our community in understanding products and even just telling a lot of brand stories we don't want to just sell product but it's important for people to understand where brands come from especially local ones our whole thing is you know giving the small beauty business a uh, shop front like you know use our platform to sell your product so i think that's what really differentiates um us to other platforms is that we tell stories and we want to educate our community. Um, I used to think the best part was owning your time, but that isn't even true anymore. Um, but I think being a founder is you can, you always tap into your creativity and you're constantly thinking about, you know, how can I differentiate my business? How can I build it? Um, and so just, you know, going through that thought process and having the opportunity to do stuff um, within your business um, and expand it is really cool um, because you kind of have the tools and the resources to do so when you at a certain point that's really amazing and I think one of the things that I really love about being a founder and just being a people person is I work with such um, amazing women our business is mostly black women um, employees we have two guys um, but it's mostly black females and it's just you know, I always say to them that as much as you pour into my business, I want to pour into your career as well and your life. And so just having, you know, the opportunity to um, to mentor people and to, you know, help them in their careers and kind of like help them direct their careers is, is really um, special for me. And um, I love that part about it. What I don't like um, is the risk falls on you, you know, it's... Um, it's your risk. You have to work hard to make sure everybody gets paid at the end of the month. Um, you know, when it comes to finding funding and all of that kind of stuff, it all falls on you. And so that's the only bad part, but most of it is pretty cool. Um, I think the one thing that separated me from, you know, anybody else that had the same ideas that I started, you know, even with the little resources that I had, I took a chance on myself and said, let me see if I can build this business. And I think, 
you know, when you have an idea and everybody like has an idea that sparks in them every day, um, you kind of just brush it away and say, ah, it's not for me. Um, but just, you know, actioning that idea and taking that first step is so important. And, you know, a lot of people kind of get stuck at a point where they're like, I have a really great idea, but I need funding, you know, start small, um, they have free digital platforms, like start an Instagram page or go onto LinkedIn and, you know, you know, put whatever value or, you know, whatever service or product that you want to sell out there. And so if you do have an idea, um, first of all, action it, put it into action. And secondly, just start small. Don't think too big, too fast, because that's what cripples a lot of people when it comes to putting their businesses out there. Yeah, as I said, we're embarking on a brick and mortar retail strategy now. Um, we just found that beauty um, retail is such an experience that people want to go into the store and experience the products. And so we're opening our first store in April at Mall of Africa. And I'm hoping to do a lot more stores over the next year. Well, not a lot more, like a few stores over the next year. Um, and it's also just expanding uh, pastry. We've seen a lot of demand for pastry overseas. And so we want to get it into um, overseas retailers and local retailers as well. Um, and yeah, that's what's next for me. I don't like doing too much too fast. I don't want to overwhelm myself. Mm -hmm. And so... For me, growing beauty on tap and pastry is really important over the next uh, two or three years.